I'm going to show you how um, I might go about mixing the colours, the pigments, for this seascape. The tide is out, there's layers of mud, sand and sea, and in the sky and a, a big rock, which is uh, Steep Holm in the Severn Estuary. I've already created a, a rectangle for my image and I'm going to do a little bit of drawing. I'm using a ruler to get my horizon straight and my lines parallel and straight. I'm using a 2B pencil, but for you it would be fine to use better, in fact, to use a, um, a B, perhaps an HB. Don't press too hard when you use a pencil on the paper because you don't want to bruise the paper. I'm pressing quite hard with my 2B because I want you to be able to see my drawing. Um, on the video it doesn't show up very well otherwise, um, but for your own work I would definitely, you'd want the pencil lines to disappear once you put the washer on. So the C is very narrow, so I'm going to make a very little narrow uh, parallel for that. And then I think this. there's almost one type of mud here with different texture on it. And there's another type of mud here. And then there's the beach. And these um, horizontals are slightly different sizes. So a bit wider. And then the soft mud in the foreground is wider still. So something like that. Okay, so I've prepared my drawing and now it's um, time to do some colour mixing. So I've already started and I did say that I would use just the basic colours this time because uh, um, not everybody's got the full set and so I'm going to start with a demo that just uses the two reds, two yellows and two blues and see what I can do with it and obviously if I can't quite get the colour I can get something pretty close to it. So um, I'm going to just prepare some colours first and if you haven't done colour mixing at all before or very much before with watercolour um, I'll just go over the basics of that. So um, for instance with my ultramarine I'm taking just a small amount of water, here's my water, and just tickling the colour and making myself a little pool of that colour. So the way to keep my colour rich is not to have too much water with it. Obviously I can thin it down if I want to, but um, to start with I just want to have a little pool of that colour so um, I can dip into it. I had already started with my cerulean, so I can add a little bit more to that. I think I'm going to use that for at least the one or two of these uh, sections of the landscape. And then um, I've got a warm yellow, my cadmium yellow, and I'm going to mix one or two things with alizarin crimson won't want a great deal of that, but a little bit perhaps. And then also my cadmium red light. So those are the colours I'm going to use. So I'm going to start with the sky. And it seems to me that the sky has got a yellowish quality to it. A warm yellowish um, and it's muted and it's possibly a little bit slightly warm blue or violety muted. 
So with my warm yellow, I can mute that with a little bit of the warm blue. Just a tiny little bit. And also perhaps, let's try that. That's already muted a little bit. If I want to warm it up and make it a slightly more violety um, mix, I add a little tiny, tiny bit of alizarin crimson. And already that's muted quite a lot. So what I want to do now is thin it right down with a lot of water. Try it again on my sheet. Um, and that seems to be quite a nice muted. It's actually turned quite orangey. So if I want to make it more goldy again, I can add a little bit more yellow, warm yellow to that mix to make it a little bit more goldy. There you are. That's a bit more close to the, um, the colour that I would like. So to put it onto the painting, I need to turn this a little bit because I need to approach the edge of this um, shape with my the tip of my brush. So I'm just going to fill this shape with this colour. I'm not trying to do a smooth wash because there are slightly um, undulating sense of this of the um, the cloud, the low cloud in the sky. So I'm using the whole of my brush to pull this colour on and I'm making sure I've got enough on my brush so I can move it over the surface. And I'm filling this whole picture space with that mixed colour. So that's um, covered the surface, but there's a little bit of undulation of light and shade in there. So um, this is my adjusted one, but actually this one is a little bit more warm. I think that's a little bit gone a bit little bit too browny. So I'm going to make a slightly more mauvey um, colour with ultramarine and a little bit of just a little bit of alizarin crimson, so it becomes a soft grey. Add water to thin it, and then I'm just going to stroke literally a couple of strokes of this in the sky, just to soften and modulate the colour a little bit. Just some very simple strokes, wet into wet, that's cool. And I'm going to just leave that to um, to dry. And keep a little bit of an eye on it, but I think you know, we'll just see what happens with that. So coming down the picture space, I'll leave the rock because I need this to be dry before I do anything else. Um, what interests me is this whole area of mud in the middle ground, the middle of the painting, there are two kind of, there are different textures um, and I think I need to use a lot of dry brush and maybe um, quite a sort of almost a mauvey, um, a mauvey grey made with perhaps ultramarine and alizarin crimson to start with, I'll make a mauve which is definitely a little bit too mauve. And then I'm going to, because I want to just make it slightly browner, I'm going to try adding a little bit of the um, red, the other red, the, the um, scarlety red, the um, cadmium red light, which gives me slightly more muddied grey colour. Um, but it's still quite mauvey. So if I add a little bit of the warm yellow, I'm reaching for from my paint box, just get a little bit here, 
then add a little bit of that then I'm making a much more muted mauve. So first of all I mix the mauve and I'm slightly muting it. Um, so that's a much better colour for the, um, the dark mud. Okay, um, I may not have enough here but I've got some to start with and I'm going to just start with this band here across the back of the picture space and it's very broken, so I'm going to just try to make imitate the, the marks um, of the broken, uh, wet, textured mud with my brush. And, and so I'm just sweeping the brush across and I'm trying to leave some of the um, paper. It's called dry brush, so just a little bit on my brush and just working it across so I get some shine left. Now it, you might want to practice this on a bit of paper beforehand so if you get fill your brush and try to take it across, if you take it across slowly it will give you a good solid mark um, but if you take it across more quickly it will give you a broken one. So it's about the speed of the brush mark, as well as how much paint you put on it. So what I suggest you do is practice it first on a bit of paper um, on one side and then go for it. Okay, so that's, that's that. Now I'm just going to add a little more blue to this, because it's still quite a warm colour. And let's get a bit more ultramarine out of this. And mix a kind of cool or colder, colder grey um, with my cadmium red light and my ultramarine. And let's just show you what I've got, I'll show myself as well. So that's a colder, more blue, more purpley grey or grey, greyish purple. And the mud on Western Beach is quite a sort of wonderful rich um, purpley grey. So I'm adding a little bit more coldness to the colour, different pigment just dragged over it. And really I haven't planned this beforehand, I'm showing you my thought process as I paint. Okay so I could leave that like that. Now in the foreground it's a similar colour, or this part of the middle ground anyway, not absolute foreground, it's a similar kind of colour on the photograph. Um, it looks much richer when I show you there, but it's interesting on the screen it looks very dark and rich. Um, there's a lot of shine. I think I can carry on using the same sort of colours. So um, let's, let's just proceed. There's a much more richness in the foreground and um, so I can perhaps lay the colours um, more thickly here, but let's start, make a start and see what happens. I'm just going to sort of break the surface up a little bit more with smaller brush marks as well as I go. So quite a lot of smaller brush marks. Um, and then I'm going to build up on that a little bit because obviously you don't need to necessarily just accept the first thing you did. Um, I'm just trying to get a little bit more of a different texture for this section of the mud in the foreground. So I'm using lots of little horizontal strokes because the mud is lying flat and um, I don't want uh, you know, a lot of sort of curves and uh, marks that uh, perhaps take the eye away from this horizontal surface that's just textured softly with this lovely mud. So, okay, I'm reaching now for a bit more ultramarine and a little bit more of the cadmium red light, which gives me a lovely dull 
a dull muddy purple. That's ultramarine and cadmium red light. So um, let's see how much we've got. There's, there's quite a lot. Oh yeah, that's a nice watch. So lots of little marks, first of all. And it's much darker here in the foreground, so I can afford to go um, pretty dark there with the pigment. And working horizontally and um, trying to build up the pigment here in the foreground. Lots of little marks. And this lovely um, muted purple. I'm looking frequently at the photograph and trying to get um, a sense of um, perspective in the marks that I'm putting on. So I'm softening them as I go back and I'm making them much darker as I come forward. So in the front here we've got quite a lovely little edge of soft mud which meets the sand. <laughs> And I've done that with dry brush there, but I might go back in and um, soften it a bit more. Um, or maybe I'll just pull the sand colour over it and that might be enough. Yeah, let's just see if we can do that. See, this, is, this texture is created by the paper, this cold pressed paper, which creates this texture as I move the brush along. Right, um, I'm going to now let that dry a bit before I do the foreground and I'm going to go back to looking at the rock. So actually that's quite a, a beautiful muted um, purple as well. I could experiment with mixing it with my other blue. I've got cerulean blues um, as well as ultramarine haven't I in my basic colours. So I'm going to try mixing a similar kind of um, muted um, mauve, but with the cerulean blue this time. So the cerulean blue, <coughs> and I'm going to try mixing one of the other red, alizarin crimson with it, to start with, to see what happens. Okay, you know, I've used my cold blue and my um, purple, that, my red that tends towards blue as well. If you have your colour wheel with you, in front of you, it's quite you know, interesting. You can see, uh, you can get some ideas from that, um, where the colours lie next to each other. So, okay, so this is a slightly different shade of mauve. Um, I think what I'd like to do is Maybe add a little bit more blue to it, make it make it make it richer and a bit bluer with the cerulean. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use that. So that's nice enough. Being careful not to rub my wrist on the wet paint here. I'm just going to. I'm using the tip of my brush to take me around the edge of my drawing as we did as we filled in the shapes last week the um, on the color wheel we filled them in this way didn't we so this is a little bit like one of those shapes a wedge shape so using the tip of my brush to define the shape along the pencil line, but the pressing down on the tummy of it to cover, rather than using lots of little marks like that, which may end up giving you too much texture. These shapes um, in this slightly milky, misty, hazy landscape, or seascape, are quite sort of soft. A little bit of texture doesn't matter. There is a little bit of um, movement and undulation in the color of the um, island. Um, and we can use that, that sort of um, unevenness to our advantage. 
And um, okay, so I'll let that dry. Maybe it's not quite dark enough. Okay, so I could let it dry and I could add another layer afterwards. Um, and the water itself, the sea, which is um, going out or coming in, um, is a kind of similar colour but paler. So um, all we need to do then is add water to this mix. Um, always try colours out if you're in doubt. Don't just put them down on the painting. Try them out on a bit of paper. You'll soon see whether they're right or not. So um, having done that, you can, I'm going to, this maybe should be dry before I do this. Um, ideally, but it is drying. I think the edge is dry. So um, rather than waste time, I'm going to just go for it. And I'm going to leave a little edge of white along the front here because there's a there's a little bit of um, water or wet mud that's very shiny here, and so I'm going to leave that edge. It's the same way I painted the um, rock. I'm using the tip of my brush to take the colour along and letting the tummy of my brush cover the surface behind it. So turn it round so that my the tip of my brush can help me control the little narrow bit of um, light shiny mud. And with the back of my hand, my finger here against the edge of my board, I can use that to um, guide my my fingers, my brush, so I can get a nice even line. I'm just doing that by leaning my finger and using this as a slide rule here, so it helps me to control where my brush is going. So at this point, if I want to add any slight undulations in the sea, whatever, I can add it, because it's wet, I can add a little bit of something in there, but not too much, just uh, it's very, very faint and it's in the background of this picture. Um, and um, so let's just keep it very simple. And then that just leaves me with the foreground, which is wet mud, uh, sorry, wet sand. And it's a uh, a warmer, um, dark, darkish, warm brown colour. So I'm going to let's put, get rid of that wash. I'm thinking about how I might mix that. Um, there's certainly some yellow in it, but again, it's the warm yellow. I haven't actually needed my lemon yellow for this painting at all. So I'm going to mix in one of these little pots. To make sure I've got a sort of approximate colour. So my warm yellow and I'm going to use my alizarin crimson because there's a little bit of blue in an in alizarin crimson. Not too much though, I may have picked up too much there. Um, let's see, oh no maybe it's okay. Yeah it's okay I think. And then hmm, a tiny bit of one of the one of the blues if I use cerulean blue, that might make it go a little bit green because it tends towards green. So I'm going to go for ultramarine. And just get a little bit of my brush, add a little bit as I go, and try the colour out. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's a kind of quite a good wet sand colour. So that was warm. That was the um, Cadmium yellow, um, alizarin crimson, and and um, ultramarine, and obviously they're balanced so that I've got more yellow and quite a lot less of the other two colours, which are very dark and very strong. So um, you might need to make more one or two more attempts to mix that colour than I did. Um, but that's how you. <coughs> That's how you will forget it. 
I'm just adding a little bit more water um, because I'm going to need to cover the ground there. I need enough to cover this ground. But in doing so, I'm aware that I may have thinned it, so I'm checking the colour. There it is, here, now. Um, it's maybe okay, but if I want to add more pigment to make sure, let's add more pigment to make sure that it's rich enough. Now I've added yellow there, try it again. Um, and I think it needs cooling down a little bit, so a tiny bit more red. I've got some red here. Um, and a tiny, tiny bit of blue. Um, so yes, I think that's better. Okay, let's go for that anyway. Now, this isn't broken, this surface. It's actually broken with little dark marks. So I want, to, I want a continuous solid colour. Um, so I shall put that down first with plenty of paint on my um, yeah, this one's not, on my brush and I'm going to go over that little bit of wet mud there and bring this forward and if I want to get a nice clean edge at the base here I can turn it round and pull that down. Now, I'm running out of colour here, I haven't made enough, so I'm going to quickly mix a little bit more um, and hope that my colour doesn't dry. This is sort of what not to do. Um, I may not get exactly the same colour, but I'll get something approaching it. Try it out. Just a little bit more yellow. Okay, that's near enough, I think. Let's try it. A bit redder. Okay, that'll do. So just pulling that across the surface and Making my marks very horizontal again, so that they're they're not sort of giving me too rough and roughly textured a surface. And then um, there is there is some lovely texturing on that uh, strip of sand, which I would need to work on this when it, when this is dry. Um, but, and I probably would use something similar to the mud colour on that strip of sand. So, um, I think what I can do is find some more ultramarine and a little bit of cadmium red light to make my very dark, purpley colour. Um, rather than waiting for it to dry, I'll just quickly dot in some little bits of texture as it's drying. It's nearly dry. Um, there's not too much water on this. I'm just almost sort of like dotting in some texture. Um, little bits of worm wormholes which appear in the in the wet sand, that kind of thing. So I'll leave it like that, I think. 